There's many ways of enjoying music or being connected to music. It doesn't have to be in the public eye. It's just one expression. My favorite music is when it's not, sometimes it's not when it's in the public eye. It's when it's in private and it's just me and God. So many songs have been created that never made the light of day. It didn't even make a recording. It may have been the Sabbath and I couldn't even use technology. But there's a special song and I sang it to God and, it, and that was precious too. What do you think about holding Hanukkah celebrations during this difficult time with the hostages oh, and the war? All the more so. Yeah? That's the whole message of Hanukkah. There's so many... Hanukkah, is, there's great assimilation. There was more reason to be sad than to be happy. And yet... And, and by the way, we were still exiled even after we, we had the crucible oil that we found. And even after we won the war against the Greeks, we were still in exile. And yet we celebrated as if we found redemption because there's those who are living in the land of Israel and could experience exile though they're in the redeemed land. And there are those who are outside the land and are feeling redemption or tapped into a redemptive time that's a futuristic time. People, some people live in the past, you know, and they're always thinking about the Holocaust, the Holocaust, the Holocaust, and they're, they're living 70, 80 years ago. Some people are thinking about the future, like Rabbi Akiva and the Gemara, then the uh, Mesechus Makos, the Chakra of Makos. They're all looking at Harabite, the holy place, and everyone's crying because they see foxes on it, and then they're sad. And, and Akiva is laughing. Rabbi Akiva is laughing because he's able, and they're saying, How could you be laughing at a time like this? Everyone's crying, like the question you asked me. Yeah. And he said, he's saying because if the, if the prophecies that talk about this, the tragedy are coming true, can you imagine when the prophecies that are talking about the joy and the gladness of the future and the temple will be built coming true? Now that the sad tragedies, sad prophecies are in effect, it's only a matter of time till the happy prophecies are in effect. So many people, um, you know, they focus on every on on everything that's empty, the emptiness of their glass in this world. Yeah. But at Jewish occasions, we have a kosher bracha, a cup, uh, a filled cup with wine. And we, we say blessings on a full cup of wine, not a half cup of wine, not an almost full, but an overflow, at least full, if not overflowing cup of wine. Why? Because, <clears throat> because at, every, at every Jewish occasion, the, the, you know, we, could, we could be thinking about all the emptiness in our life. But at the highlight of the, of the occasion, Particularly, we want to hold a full glass and say, I'm going to focus on how my glass is full, not how my glass is empty. I'm going to make a brach on that. I'm going to drink it. And I'm going to, I'm going to be satiated by the fullness of life. So many people are focused on the emptiness. Can you imagine what you're, when you have that beautiful, beautiful glass and when it's actually filled with, with beautiful, fine wine, yeah. you just have to find the wine. Search, and you know where wine comes from? A lot of processes, a lot of steps in the process. You have to wait a long time till you get that fine wine. And the older it is, the better it is. So sometimes you have to wait a long time till that fine wine. So I think all the more so we should celebrate Hanukkah. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said that, 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 particularly when some harsh things were going on in the world, <clears throat> During his time, if it was a holiday season or, or the, the holiday, uh, the month of, of Tishrei, which has a lot of Jewish holidays, for his happy occasion, he would say even more joy. That's the Hasidic way. It's a futuristic way. We don't get stuck in the sad prophecies. We know that every sad prophecy is filled with an even greater joyous prophecy. So some people are living and are, are obsessed with sad things and some people are obsessed with good things. So I give, I give everyone a blessing to be focused on the, the fullness of the glass, the blessings that we have. Even if there's immense amounts of dark, darkness, immeasurable amounts of darkness, I light a tiny little candle, whether it's in my home or outside of my home, and I'm saying blessings and I'm singing joyous songs, but it's a tiny little bit of light. How is that of any value in the immense, vast darkness of the world? That's the point. We don't obsess over darkness. We obsess over light. We celebrate it, and we, we bring people together surrounding even the smallest lights. That's enough for us. We don't need the whole world to be filled with light to already be an illuminated person. I'm an illuminated soul. We're illuminated people. You're illuminated, Scott. We're radiant. A soul is a radiant thing. When you can celebrate the, the, the light of your soul, even if you're surrounded by darkness, you're that little candle, that, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine and I'm going to sing about it even though I'm surrounded by darkness. I think it's through the joy will actually bring joy. You know, you draw upon yourself you know, you, you, you draw magnetically what you want in the world 
by the energy that you yourself are. If yeah. you're a happy guy, happy people want to hang out with you. If you're, hap- if you're a sad guy, happy people do not want to spend so much time around you, mm-hmm. unless you're their nebuch case, unless you're their pity case. What we should really focus on is sharing hope, sharing videos of such things like this, of people singing, dancing, joy. Yeah. And when you instill hope in someone, you're, you're, you're bringing tremendous good in the world. When you instill fear in someone, even if it's real fear, things have happened, yeah. you're, you're not doing good for people. It's not a good thing. People think they're helping the world. It's not good for the world. The best thing you can do for the world is to give people reason to be happy and joyous and live life and to be dancing even when there's reason to be sad. Because there's always a reason to be sad, whether it's a little reason or a big reason. But it's, it's what do you want to spend your life doing? Singing through the hardships or crying every single day because there's always hardships. I'd rather sing even when it's hard than to be, than, than even when I have reason to be happy to be crying. What kind of life is that? To be crying when you're at your child's simcha because sad things are happening in the world, you should be joyous. If people want to follow you online, where would they follow you? They can follow my friend of me. You can't follow me, there's not much to follow. But to follow me and my bandmate, there's what to follow. So you can check Zusha Music on Instagram. You can check um, uh, Zusha on Spotify or on any streaming platforms. You can listen to positive music that will bring you into good places, that will help you be the person you were always meant to be and unlock your potential. Fear closes you up. Blessings.